try, you know, it was very, school teachers were lost, we were lost, we didn't know what to do. It took a long time before anyone exerted any sort of leadership to try and mobilize teachers to figure out what, what does education mean? What does schooling mean in a community that's torn apart, polarized you know, in this violent way? And what happened was that the, the first project was the very first curriculum development project that was created in Northern Ireland. And there was a bunch of Protestant teachers and a bunch of Catholic teachers. I was one of the Catholics. We were invited to get together and we would, the task was to create uh, teaching units in, in subject of religion in Ireland that could be used in Catholic or Protestant schools. You know, very basic stuff, you know, like what's in the chapel, what's in the church. <laughs> if I go in the chapel, will the devil get me? <laughs> it's very basic in Ireland. It's <laughs> fundamental fears, you know. <laughs> need to know that. We did that. We produced six teaching units that are still used in, in the schools. And it was only after the event that had dawned, dawned on me, we got so involved in the task, which is the, the technical work of these units, that we avoided one another. We weren't able to talk to one another as a group of teachers, like trying to deal with it. Like, how was it? What was it like to be in the room with someone from that other community? And we didn't even notice it. Like, it was almost like we, didn't, we weren't even conscious of it. And that's a huge challenge, is that people will turn what's what we call an adaptive challenge. You know? It's a complex piece of work about what are the values are at stake, what are the different loyalties at stake for different communities, what are the different losses that they fear. That's, that's the messy, you know. It's not, it's not technical. No technical fix. <coughs> You know, what's, if you use that same uh, framework for thinking about what's the problem that we're facing now in this financial crisis? <clears throat> you know? What is it really? And is, is, you know, given AIG $250 billion or whatever it was, is that, is that really addressing the problem? Or is that a technical fix? Now, what's, all I'm doing is, is keeping at bay the underlying nature of the problems is, is going, to, going to hit again. So I share that as a, that, this, this is a huge challenge, is that we frequently turn what we call an adaptive problem into something technical. I'll say a little bit about that in a moment, about where that gets very messed up in peacemaking. Um, and, 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 and again, you see, these these education efforts that, are, that focus only on materials. Oh, we were talking in break about in programs like Seas of Peace, the programs that, that bring children together. Wonderful idea. But frequently what happens is they bring children together and it's, it's the adults who are avoiding dealing with the issue themselves in the hope that the next generation will somehow get to grips with it. And it's a, you know, and it's a huge... Uh, Avoidance. Now what happens, we find this happening in Northern Ireland, that children would come over here and they were very welcome and wonderful experiences and they live with families and they, you know, Protestant Catholic children would be the best friends. They go back home. <laughs> Nothing had changed there. Their, their parents weren't out there mixing up with other with Protestants, you know. And that somehow they're expected to carry the burden of making the shifts. Okay? When there's, when there's nothing supportive. Again, I'm not judging the project, I just think it's, you know, it's, the, it's, it's how you get to grips with the real, the real problems. And, uh, you know, this is one example where that, that, those curriculum and bond projects, they're not going to do it. And so after about six years, well, the final thing for me was one night, three masked men, the Crossing Paramilitary Organization, arrived at the home of uh, one of my students who might talk the former year. She was uh, 15 years old. And uh, it's still hard to talk about it.
They shot her mother, her sister, her aunt, left her with one brother. And so you imagine, here I am, and I'm teaching Shakespeare. <laughs> and the reality of life is, this, this is what's happening. And, you know, there's a deep effect on everyone, you know? So, it was, that was, for me, that was like the final straw. I just didn't know what to do, I couldn't make sense of anything, so I quit. <laughs> quit teaching. I thought, I've got to figure this out. And that was really what started me on this quest, if you like, to really try and get to grips with understanding. One, what, what is the nature of violence? How do you explain it? And then how do you begin to intervene as a leadership challenge to address it? And you know, long story, but I ended up eventually uh, in a peace and reconciliation center. I was program director for four years. And you know, none of us knew. We, we were really good-hearted, well-meaning. None of us knew what to do. Not, like, not, not like any of us any training on you. This is what you're supposed to do. So we'd start bringing Protestant and Catholic together in these dialogue workshops. And, uh, you know, it, it was really interesting because as, you know, you find that as soon as you start, an organization begins to address a problem, what happens is that, that problem out there starts to manifest in its own internal workings. Have you noticed this? Mm -hmm. So we'd get together and this, the, the community was called the Glen Creek community. And we would get together to figure out, okay, what are we going to do? And the older folks would say, well, reconciliation is God's work. So let's pray. Yeah. And the younger people were irate. <laughs> and say, no, prayer is what you do when you accomplish something. <laughs> it's classic. So, so there we are. We're dealing with conflict. And in fact, conflict is sort of right there. Now, at one level, that's the beauty of these places. That's, that's the opportunity. Because if the group can, can get to grips with that internally, you see, then you have something to offer. So we would wrestle with all of that. And then, uh, at one point, people began to say, you know, they're really, what's the problem here? Well, the problem isn't just people uh, counting in Protestant in Northern Ireland. If you think about it in a larger system, what's happening in Northern Ireland is maybe the result of this very poor relationship between England and Ireland. You can almost think of it like a family. Uh, mother and father aren't getting along too well, and then they live with the kids as a problem, rather than the nature of that relationship. So then we figured, well, why don't we start by Englishmen to meet with Irishmen, because there was none of that happening, there still isn't. And I'll tell you a story about this because it's, one, again, it's one of those moments where you're confronted and nothing can prepare you for it, and they're profoundly important in terms of learning. And so, we, um, yeah, so we, we invite only men, because it's, it's men who do the Kelly. And uh, this, I mean, it's still very vivid to me this experience. It was, one of the Englishmen starts to speak. And he had gone to English public school. I don't know if you're familiar with the English public school system. It's really a private school system. Now, the way that system works was that young boys from the age of eight or nine would be plucked from their families and are put in these public schools. And it's changed a lot. But at that, but at that, at that, that time, the older boys had, you know, the right and that culture to oppress the younger ones, you know, and to have them like polish their shoes and they didn't they got beaten up and anything. So you're at that hands at eight years old. But then when you become nine, you you know, it passes down origin, you move up and and then eventually these are the these are the men who who would go to places like Eton and Oxford. And by the, and then and then they would go out into the colonies in positions of authority in Africa and India. And they're so brutalized in their own emotional being that they could, they could